Today we're going to do water changes. And what does that mean? It means that we're going to take the water from one larval tank and transfer the villagers to another larval tank. It means that we're removing the water completely because they've been in the water for 48 hours, for two days. So each two days we drain the water out, collect the larvae, and move them into clean water. The reason we do that is because they've been swimming around in the same water with the food, they've been excreting, there's been bacteria growth. We not only want to remove the water, but we also want to be able to clean the surfaces. That's one of the most important areas that need to be cleaned in the larval area. And so this is our larval, we call this our larval area. These are larval tanks. Each one of them is 68 liters or 18 gallons. They have a 45 degree conical bottom on the bottom. And inside them, there's a standpipe and also an airlift. They're covered, we keep them covered so that no dust and things like that get collected uh, in the larval tank, so it keeps them that much cleaner. In my hand, I have a thermometer. We're gonna measure the temperature of the water that they're in now, and also measure the temperature of the water that they're going into to make sure that it's, it's close as it can be. The larvae grow the best at 27 degrees Celsius up to 29 degrees Celsius. However, they do grow at 25 degrees Celsius all the way up to about 31 or 32 degrees Celsius. So there is a wide range there, but we always say the optimal is 27 to 29. And so the first thing that Victoria and I are gonna do is figure out our water change sequence. And we're gonna do that by collecting the data sheets on the wall. We're gonna look at the age of the animals. There's always one empty tank in the larval system because we have to be able to fill that tank up take the villagers from one tank and put them in the clean tank. That tank gets clean, and then we start the process all over again. And you'll get to see that as we move through this process. So for right now, we're gonna collect the data sheet. So Victoria, if you wouldn't mind doing that. Okay, so we have in our hatchery right now, we have two tanks that are nine days old, and we have two tanks that are 14 days old. And so we're gonna go ahead and make a decision now. We know that our empty tank is tank number four in this area here. And then we have tanks one, two, three, and five that are full of villagers. And today we're gonna to start with tank number two. So we need to take, take the pencil, <laughs> so handy here. Take the pencil and whatever is in tank two, we'll start there. Mm -hmm. So tank two has the older villagers and they're in tank two and we're moving them to tank four. So if you'd go ahead and record that data. Okay. So once tank two is empty, then we're gonna move tank three into tank two. So tank three into tank two. And we write out the data so once we start, we don't get too confused and that way we can follow the data that we've already organized. The first tank we're gonna do is tank two to tank four. So go ahead and record the temperature. We use a thermometer in the hatchery that is not mercury based. It's really important not to use mercury in the hatchery at all. If we were to drop this, then we would have essentially toxic mercury in the hatchery and it's very difficult to get rid of. So instead we use a, a, a non-toxic, I think it's a, a type of alcohol in here. So if there was happened to break, um, it, wouldn't be, um, a, a, it wouldn't be a toxic issue. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Thank you. Okay, looks like we're at 26. All right, I want to introduce you to the different water change apparatus that we use to, to be able to remove the villagers from the larval tanks. So first of all, this is a larval sieve that has a very, very fine mesh on the bottom. That way the water goes through, any debris goes through, but the villagers get collected on the inside. There's a pole that we use that goes through the middle. This is a handle for easy access. We also have a bucket here, and the sieve sits in the bucket. 
The next piece of the apparatus that we have is the siphon hose. And that's going to siphon the villagers out of the larval tank right into the sieve here. So you're going to see that come together as well. One of the notes that I want to make sure you understand is that there's different size mesh depending on the age of the villager. So for instance, the villagers that we're working with right now are 14 days old, so they're gonna be somewhere between 200 and 250 micron mesh. Whereas the younger ones, we're gonna use either 105 or 150. And then as they get older, it goes all the way up to 300. And that allows us to get rid of any of the animals or villagers that might be slow growers or also that might have have died or, or are runs. Um, so that allows us to uh, do a nice cleanup of our villager culture. One of the things that we want to make sure we do is always keep the villagers in salt water. So we're not going to we're not going to dry sieve them. We're always going to have water in there. I also want to explain that we don't take the villagers from the valve at the bottom. As you saw earlier, the shells are very fragile. They have a tiny little beak. They are very intricate. And so the thing that we want to do is make sure that they're buffered as they have the water change. So the siphon allows that nice, smooth buffering for them to fall into the sieve very gently. And we can see from our microscope observations that our water changes are working. Take the larval tank lid off. Here's our siphon hose. We're gonna put it inside the tank. First, we're gonna clip it onto the side here. Hang the siphon hose in. One thing that you wanna be careful about is not to put your hands in the tank as much as possible. So we try to do everything as clean as possible. The siphon hose gets hooked in this handle here. It's important to fill this bucket up at least to three quarters full. Uh, once again, we don't want to dry sieve the villagers, so just putting in enough water so that when the siphon starts, the villagers will go directly into water. Next thing we do, we start the siphon. That's done by taking the hose and filling up the hose with water. Do it. There we go. Start the siphon. There's a couple things to keep in mind when you're doing larval changes like this is that the sieve is not tipped down so that you don't want to lose any villagers, and that this is really secure in here. And it is, it won't, it won't move unless, unless we were to knock it. So we stand by our water changes. We don't leave the room. We don't start conversing with someone, we just stay right here watching exactly what's going on. We use this blue bin here. You can see that it keeps the water off the ground. So um, even though hat trees can certainly have water on the ground, it's much better to keep a dry area, especially in a small hat tree like this. We still have aeration going in the tank because it's keeping all the villagers in suspension. We're also making sure that the villagers aren't getting caught anywhere. It's nice to shake the sieve once in a while, but just gently shake it. We don't want to upset the, the siphon. Okay, the airlift is coming out of the tank. I'm gonna use this little hook here just to get it out of my way so that I can see the rest of the water change going on inside here. And there we go, we just drained the tank. Sometimes there's, there's water in the siphon hose and you just wanna make sure that you get all the rest of the villagers out. I'm done with the siphon hose, I'm just gonna put it here so that it stays clean. We keep everything off the floor. We consider the floor the dirtiest place in the hatchery, so we're always trying to make sure that nothing that comes in contact with the larvae end up um, ending up on the floor. So, now the next stage will be, and I can see the villagers on the bottom of the sieve. So we've done a nice collection of villagers there. They're going into tank number four. So, just need to get the water ready to hose them in. This is a special hose that we put together. 
so that we can direct the spray to be able to spray off the villagers on the, on the actual sieve. But we don't want it to be very strong, so I'm only going to turn this valve about halfway, not even that. I'm going to pick up the sieve with my left hand. I'm going to pull this bar out because I no longer need it and it's in my way. I'm going to lean it on the tank here. And I'm going to hose down these little bellagers off the sieve. And you put, do it at an angle. You start up at the top, you work your way down. They're so big now, we can actually see them really well. And then I'm going to bring it back over here. I'm going to do one quick look, see if I left any behind. No, I got them all. Okay, so we just finished doing water changes and we looked at the villagers, they're all back in suspension again, the aeration is good. The next thing that we'll do is we will feed the, the microalgae that we did the cell count on this morning. And once we've done that, we cover them back up with their, their cover, their, their lid. And then really they're good to go for another 48 hours. However, of course we will feed them again tomorrow, but really they're in their new home and we're very content that they have um, exactly everything they need right now. After we've done the water exchange, then we need to clean the inside of the tank. We use a very mild solution of muriatic acid, of 10 mils of muriatic acid to one liter of fresh water. And we use a simple sponge. We pour this right into the tank here. The valve at the bottom of the tank is closed. So I just, these tanks are small enough that I can reach in. Clean all the sides of the tanks. That's what the whole purpose behind the water change is, is to get rid of any potential bacteria that might be on the sides of the tank. We also want to do any surfaces. So the surface here of the stand pipe also gets done. Once we've done with that, then we're going to drain the liquid out of the bottom. I'm just going to move this a little closer. I'm going to spray the inside of the tank with salt water. And I get all the edges right around the whole thing. There we go. So this tank is now ready to be filled up with new sea water so we can transfer the next villagers from the next tank over. Put this standpipe in place which means to firmly push down on it. Then we're going to grab the salt water hose from over here. It's got a hook on it. But it's very easy for us to use. It's the first time this has been used today, so I'm just going to run a little water out of it. And then it's ready to fill out. So the other piece of apparatus that goes into the tank is the airlift. And we use weights on this too just to make sure that it positions right. And this is an airlift because what happens is, is the water is the air comes in and it pushes the water up through the column. And so it picks up anything that's on the bottom and it circulates it up into the tank. And so that means the villagers always stay in suspension. And it's, it's a very gentle aeration for them. Take this and hang this on the sandpipe. I'm going to put the airline onto the air valve here. Like that. Okay. Temperature is quite warm. It's 32. You might remember earlier we said the temperature in the larval tank was only 26. So that's, um, that's a high difference. It's not a preferable dif difference. You want to be within two to four degrees between the tank exchanges. We have found though that we, um, 
that the villagers are hardy and they can take an extreme temperature change, but it's not the preference. Between each water change, we like to clean our water change items in this mild acid solution, which is 10 milliliters of muriatic acid per liter of fresh water, and then we give it a rinse in a fresh water bin. So I'll demonstrate what we do. We want to make sure to clean the lid on both sides, as this will be going onto the newly water changed larval tank. The rinse. And this is great timing as uh, a colleague can be working on preparing the next tank while we're cleaning in here. With the siphon hose, I just usually rotate it like so. all the acid out, fresh water rinse, set it to dry and we also wash the airlift. Lastly, we wash the sieve, but the screen mesh is really fragile, so we want to be careful and mindful of how we wash it. With these bins, we keep it, we lay it horizontally and just kind of gently rotate it. I also like to um, hose down the mesh screen with fresh water to make sure that it's nice and clean. What we're doing right now is observing villagers using the dissecting microscope, also called a stereo microscope. It has a power that's about 10x all the way to 40x, so that 10 times up to 40 times the size of the actual subject, and in this case we're looking at Kong villagers. We do these observations every day. We want to be able to see how the villagers are growing in their larval tank. We want to make sure that they're growing with their shell in the, in the, right, um, in the right size range, also their, their lobes. And then in addition to that, we want to see that they've been feeding. We want to see that their guts are golden. And so this is an everyday occurrence. You want to be able to do a monitoring of the health of the villagers. This is one of the most important things in a hatchery is to see what your villagers look like. They, they are in fact the ones that tell you what's going on because the response of, of the water changes, of the algae that you're growing, of the care that you give them, the, the exact response is what you're gonna see under the microscope because they're the ones that are growing and taking, taking your husbandry, your aquaculture, and putting it into practice by growing into a larval developing queen conch.